What is up lover researchers, it's Kevin. Welcome back to another video and today I want to talk about the five things I wish I knew before I became a UX researcher. But before I get into the video, I just want to give a huge shout out to you, aspiring UX researchers, badass UX leaders, for helping this channel grow from zero to over a thousand subscribers. Give yourselves a pound back, a big round of applause. Thank you everyone who subscribed, not subscribed, commented or not commented, everyone who's liked or disliked my video, everyone who's shared it, everyone who's giving me ideas or asked me questions and giving me that support. Thank you. When I first started this channel, I didn't think anyone would want to watch me <laughs> talking to a camera. It was one of the scariest things I've ever done. But from your questions, your support, makes me happy to know that there's over a thousand badass UX leaders just like you who's ready to make a difference with UX research. Thank you again. Let's keep the ball rolling and let's get into it. When I first found out about UX research in 2014, I was coming from a place of uncertainty. A complete noob. I had no idea how to get into the field. Did I need to know design? Do I need to know how to code? What skills are enough? How ready was I? So this arbitrary milestone of a thousand subscribers got me to do a little bit of reflection. Reflecting on my experiences, the expectations versus reality to help you better set expectations for what this career entails. So the first thing I wish I knew before becoming a UX researcher is research skills alone won't help you succeed. The hardest part about UX research isn't the research. That's actually the easiest part. Leadership and influence, highly underrated. Boot camps won't tell you this stuff. You're going to be working with people who are not researchers. You're going to be working with people who don't have the right expectation of what you do. You're going to be working with people who assume you do things and then ask you to do things that are not valid in nature. So you've got to learn to say no. I've had team members ask me, like, tell me to conduct research and tell me to ask stupid questions. Like, would you use this product? I told them no. <laughs> research is 50% of the job description. The other 50% is people skills. Well, cool, Kevin. Thanks for letting me know. What should I do? Well, as a researcher, I make it a point to give you the facts and then make a recommendation. So my recommendation to you is to read leadership books. Dale Carnegie, Robert Cialdini. Practice your communication skills. Practice your active listening skills in your everyday life. Next time you have a disagreement, ask why. Don't get defensive, ask why. Try to empathize. Try to understand what's going through their mind. This way you can start earning that trust, that influence, and then you can adapt it into your future situations where there might be a huge unknown. Which brings me to number two. You have to be comfortable with ambiguity and you have to adapt. Oh, how many times I've worked on a huge project only to have it turn 180 degrees on a dime. Why? Because leadership said so. And as a result, the entire team had to adjust, shift objectives, and start a new initiative with no clear directions. As researchers, your team might be looking to you for answers on which direction to take the product. You have to be okay with that responsibility. Sometimes you may even have to play the product manager role without being the product manager. Now every company is different. Sometimes all you have to do is take orders and execute, in which case you don't really have to worry about this ambiguity, but for the rest of us, we have to be flexible adaptive and be really comfortable in these situations. One thing that I've learned at working at startup like teams and companies is that you might have to leave everything you know at the door, constantly adjust and be open to feedback and change. What worked for me at Google might not work at Unity, might not work at Uber. So you have to leave those things at the door and take in how people work. Now obviously you know your research craft. You shouldn't leave that at the door, but situation wise, you might have to. If you ever feel stretched in these situations, that's a good thing. It means you're growing. Consider it character building. Now the third thing I wish I knew, the value of the right mentor. Now when I first started, I didn't have one. Hell, I didn't even have one until a few months ago, five years into my UX career. I had to figure out by myself during a time where UX research wasn't really a thing yet, I was just starting to catch on with some companies. I would struggle with imposter syndrome every single day. 
Sometimes I still feel it. My mentor really helped me with my confidence, really showed me where I can grow, especially in terms of interpersonal communications. Now, how do you get a mentor? This could be a whole video in itself, but in short, ask around nicely. Please don't make it all about yourself. <laughs> Most people won't reply, and that's okay. It only takes one to change your life. Now, I hope that I can be your virtual YouTube mentor. And join the Zero to UX Facebook group where you can share stories with each other and help each other out. Fourth thing I wish I knew is people don't care about your certifications. When I tried to break into this field, I considered boot camps, I considered certifications, grad school, thinking those are the only ways that I can get in, right? What I found out was even if you had all those things, you might not be prepared for this job. It certainly helps to have some classroom education on it, but you'll learn so much more by doing. Remember, UX is not just a job, it's a skill, it's a way of thinking. And I want to be clear, recruiters might care. The first step to noticing. But when you're on a job, no one does. However, this is not an excuse to not know the ins and outs of research. I've had computer science people ask me if their background was a good fit for UX research. And I said, well, do you know how to deal with order effects? in a repeated measure study. You know the difference between within subjects and between subjects. How to calculate confidence intervals, for example. If you don't know the answers to those, you might not be ready. And I don't say that to be mean. I know it can sound harsh, but I want to be realistic. Those are basic research competencies. Knowing the difference between between subjects and within subjects, confidence intervals, those are really basic for researchers. If you don't know it, that's okay. That's why you're watching these videos, because you're a badass UX leader, and you're, I commend you for trying to learn it. And just as an aside, I think the downfall of some of these UX boot camps, UX design boot camps out there is that the focus on the UX design process. You'll learn about UX research. They have one small little module about user research. And usually they'll just have you go out and do interviews, A-B testing, maybe, and usability testing. And that's considered user research. If you've been watching this channel, you know that's not true. You know there's so much more than interviews and usability testing. And that's that's the kind of stuff that I see some bootcamp graduates do all the time. It's just interviews and usability testing. Surveys, maybe. But nothing else. <laughs> and understanding how to design an experimental study. That's the shortcoming. Anyway, enough ranting. Uh, <laughs> on to the last but not least fifth thing I wish I knew before I became a UX researcher is how long and how difficult it may be to get in. If you're currently trying to transition, comment down below what that's like so far. It took me six months of grit from leaving my Stanford job to getting my first UX research job, but it could very well have been 10 months or two months. It was really uncertain. I've had some of you share stories with me of your journey. Some of you have taken four months, some of you have seven months, and so on. I've been there. Rejection after rejection. It could be discouraging. I've been rejected from jobs I didn't even apply to. That's how sucky it was for me. <laughs> and every month that went by, I want to give up. My plea to you is please, please don't give up. I know how hard it can be, but anything worthwhile takes time. If you're stuck because you don't have any projects to talk about, sorry, you gotta stop waiting for people to give you a project. There are a million problems out there that could be solved. Just last week, I was in France. I had troubles at the ticket machine. Like literally, didn't know how to buy a ticket. There was like a rolly thing and the button to select and I was like, what is this? <laughs> in just the past week, I wanted to go camping and I wanted to look for campsites on some government websites. I couldn't do it. I didn't know what the regulations are. I didn't know what the rules are. I didn't know what campsites had what, you know, it was really confusing. So those are problems that I just faced in the past week. You can take those, spot those problems and turn them into projects. Take that initiative, find the problem and create your own projects. Showcase what you know, show your determination and that you're committed to being a badass UX leader. Okay. I believe in you. If you're stuck at the interview stage, don't give up. You're good enough to get the interview. There's just something you have to work on. 
If you find yourself consistently stumbling on uh, research questions, note it down, learn, and then fix in an interview. You're going to get better at it, so don't give up. Uh, questions such as, you have three designs you want to test and you have two weeks, how would you approach this problem? And you stumble to answer it? It's time to go back to the drawing board, learn how you actually approach the problem. Or do mock interviews with me, what up? Email me, kevin at zero to ux.com. <laughs> so those are the five things I wish I knew before becoming a UX researcher. I didn't have a good expectation of the job, so I really hope that gives you a better sense of what the job entails. And I believe whatever you are, researcher, intern, volunteer, assistant, manager, you should be influencing up. That's the power of the UX researcher. And right now is the perfect time to get into this field now that there's a ton of resources out there. So wherever you are in your UX research journey, don't give up, it's gonna be worth it. It's really rewarding work. One where you can grow as a person and also one where you can make huge impact wherever you are, whatever company you go to. So comment down below what you want to know about UX research. Thank you again for watching. Thank you all for a thousand subscribers. Let's keep the ball rolling. I make all things UX research related to help you become the most badass UX leader. Matt Love, peace.